So, but I will say this too, is that marriages and relationships are not, um, they're not hard, but they're not easy either. You know what I'm saying? So you got to put work into it. You get what you get, what you put into it, you know? And if you are true to who you are as a person, then you, you put your best foot forward. And, and I think that's a, what we're, we're missing a lot of is like a lot of men are hurt. A lot of men have been hurt by the mothers, uh, dads walking out. Uh, a lot of they're hurt by different women, you know, uh, so they find themselves hurting other people. And so that becomes a real issue in relationships. Mm. This conversation, like, like we don't hear talking about relationships, but like, <laughs> but you say saying men, but like, I mean, women too, though. I mean, yeah. they have, they, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is caused by men, but uh, it's just like, I don't know. It's confusing because you say, you know, men, they build all this pain, but then again, they hurt women. So then they have all this pain. A lot of us, and I'm just speaking for like my age group, you know, it's kind of like this weird disconnect of just like a back and forth battle between like men and women about who's better or who's right or who's wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, And like you said, we all need to probably just seek individual help to yeah. fix our problems yeah if if you're if we're if we're honest i i i believe this is my opinion um uh, based on you know um the many people that i see is that i think that every person when they go into a serious relationship now i'm not just talking about when you're dating because when you're dating you are just kind of trying to figure out what you like and what you don't like but when you're in a serious relationship, I think that each individual must take account of their past. You know, there are a lot of historical uh, uh, wounds that needs to be kind of healed. And so with that being said, each individual that is in this relationship must take it upon themselves to get the proper help. And, and it's not saying that you have some significant issues of the past, but you still you don't want to take any burdens or any any uh, ill wills uh, into a marriage or a, 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 a relationship to the point where all these things that you're doing is being projected onto them. And then they're feeling like, wow, this ain't this is not the person that I hooked up with or this is not the person that I wanted to be with because he he or she bring these, this baggage. So it is important. From, from an individual standpoint that you do the work on yourself before going into the to the relationship. I have a phrase that I say, and, and it's, it's true. The individual make the collective better, mm-hmm. meaning that until you as an individual work on yourself first, that's when the collective, which is you and your significant other, will be better. So you have to focus on you first. And that's not being selfish. That's just being real. Because at the end of the day, you're bringing in your perspective with the other person's perspective. Now, you tell me, how many times do you think that you're going to hit a home run and say, okay, my perspective is just like that, that person's? It's not. You are both uniquely made and created. So guess what? You're going to have different views. And that's where the trouble comes in as, as well, is that when you got two conflicting views, who's right or who's wrong, what you, just what you were saying is that we have to have a compromise. We have to figure out where the line uh, is drawn. We have to set boundaries of what we're going to do. We're going to have to agree to disagree or we're going to have to agree. But I always say this, if, if it's going to risk the family, then you do what's right for the family versus what's right for you as an individual. If you're going to, if it's not right for the relationship, then don't do it. So even that's even in dating, you know, if you're going to make a decision that's going to hurt both of you guys, why do it? Mm-hmm. That's selfish. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing I always say about dating uh, if you wouldn't want your partner to do that to you, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. What? Okay, I agree. To, I agree to that. But what about the unconscious uh, of of hurt that that people are doing? They they say they don't know, or or they are used to doing it a certain way. Because you know, we always say that's just how I am. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you got another person that you're you're in in a relationship with. You can just be how you are. You have yeah. to be able to, you know, give a little bit. I, at that, when, when you're talking about that, I feel like the person 
they just don't they don't know any better or you know or like you said kind of like stuck in your ways but if you if you see that your uh, partner is not receptive to that or that's not something that they liked and yeah you need to fix and make those changes so you don't have to continue to hurt them right well well uh, Jaleel, you're an anomaly because guess what? A lot of men think that way and a lot of women think that way. I mean, we, we're in a generation, your generation, that women are a lot more aggressive than men are, where <laughs> it used to be the other way around. Yeah. So, you know, you got to kind of uh, kind of skirt the line because you don't know what to expect in a relationship. And so you got um, just as many women, you know, playing the field as men now. Yeah. I mean, I don't see an issue with that, though, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're single, then do whatever you do, whatever you do. Like, that's that's your business. So whenever right. you're ready to settle down, then settle down. But if you're single, because like you said, men, we out here doing whatever we want. So why can't a woman do whatever she wants? I, I agree. I agree. I agree. But when in terms of us talking about um, in terms of us talking about a serious relationship and in a possibly a marriage you have to consider that other person even you know if you're playing the field because that hurt is is a deep hurt you know it's a it's a it's a deep cut and a lot of people can't handle that you know and and that leads to a lot of depression a lot of anxiety you know uh just last week you know one of one of my clients was uh struggling with getting back into another relationship because of the way the last one was and had more apprehension of if they, if they felt like the next person would feel the same way that they felt because this person was supposed to love them and this person was supposed to be there for them. But when they broke up, that person went back to the life that they knew. Mm -hmm. and, and so in turn, that person was like, well, did you really change? And did you really love me? And so there are, there are a lot of, uh, 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 questions that are asked when you have these type of relationships. And so you definitely have to be careful uh, with dealing with that. So, but let's talk about, let's talk about the fact that how your parents can influence or shape your view of relationships. How your parents can shape the view of your relationship or your of, of relationships, period. I mean, it's pretty much everything. I think your parents shape, I mean, your parents shape everything that you are as a person, I feel like. But just like you said, most importantly, relationships, uh, just depending on how they move. I mean, if you're talking about abuse or cheating, abandonment, I, yeah, there's it's yeah. so many different ways you can go with that. Right, right. And 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 I will say, you know, because I'll put myself out there a little bit uh, that, um my my upbringing being raised uh initially with my mom and then going to live with my grandparents um i seen a different side of relationships and so it was kind of hard for me to really understand what a healthy relationship looked like and and so uh you know my grandparents they they was married over 50 almost 60 years but they didn't sleep in the same room so I'm like, you know, me as a young man, I'm like, if you marry, I think and you're supposed to sleep in the same room. And then, you know, you got uh, I had 14 uh, uh, aunts and uncles and, you know, more than a half of them have been through a divorce before or a broken relationship. So for me, the odds were against me to have a healthy relationship and a healthy marriage. And so what I did was. I messed up early on in my marriage, but I had to get it right. And so, cause my mind was made up as like, okay, I don't want to fall victim to what my, my uh, aunts and uncles did or my grandparents did. I wanted to do something different. And I wanted to be able to show my kids something different as well that, you know, let's, this is what a healthy relationship looks like. This is what a healthy marriage should be. And so, Man, I'm I'm gonna tell you that kind of messed me up as a kid. Like, wait a minute, they married, but they don't even sleep in the same room, and I didn't even see them kiss. You know, mm. stuff, just like small stuff like that. I didn't even see them kiss. So I'm like, wow, you know, that's crazy. So you know, a lot of that kind of stuff shapes your worldview 
of, of, of relationships and, and, and marriages and stuff like that. So, you know, we have to kind of shake that kind of stuff. I could have easily fell victim to the same thing. Yeah. But but I refuse to not to do that. I mean, it's hard. It was hard, but I, I, I finally got it right. Mm hmm. So, yeah. So you wanted to sleep in separate bedrooms, but your wife wouldn't let you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I didn't want to do that, bro. Um, um, no, nah, I didn't want to do that. I just made, you know, again, I was young mm -hmm. and I made some stupid, stupid mistake. I mean, I'm talking about stupid mistakes. So uh, that's because, too, I hadn't really when I got <laughs> with my wife, I hadn't really fully got a lot of the things that I was used to doing out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, it took me a minute. I didn't, I, I didn't cheat on her, but it just took me a minute to kind of get used to being around one person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than being around multiple people going out, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out with people, you know, uh, dating different, different women. Now here I am, I'm with one person, one woman, and now I'm spending my time with her. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it was different for me. And, and so, you know, I, I realized that at an early, early age, um, uh, that I just didn't want to play the field. You know, I, it just is, it, it wears you out, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> I don't know if you ever played the field, but you know, uh, playing the field, it makes you tired. It wears you out. You got to play to every aspect of the, the dating game. <laughs> hey, get it how you live. But uh, literally like now, see a lot of issue is I'm very, uh, I guess, independent. If that's what okay. you want to call it, where yeah. I'm just so used to just kind of being by myself all the time. And just if I need to go do something, I get up and go. If I need to go to the mall, I get up and go. If I want to go to a concert, I'll go to a concert by myself. Like I'm always just doing stuff by myself. So the hardest thing for me to uh, kind of get over when I was uh, dealing with somebody seriously last year was literally just considering them like instead of like just getting up and just going not asking them oh do you want to go that was my issue it's just being so independent and it just kind of pushed her away but but looking at it now though i mean you it sounds like you know you're you've grown and understand so looking at it now you feel do you still feel the same way or you still you're you're open more to kind of still consider the next person that you get involved with oh yeah i mean if i wanted to work i have to consider the next person okay yeah the next the, you know the next person i you know they i have to consider them i can't just think about me all the time